Hey, thanks for coming to the channel. Oh, man. So, uh, as you may or may not be aware, right, I'm working on this OBD2 stuff. And I know I got this big, I, I set myself up. I was talking about the bi-directional stuff. I think the, the way to go is through the CAN network. I want to bring that into my, um, what I got over here. See that? I got my phone live, my fingers or whatever. Um, I want to bring the CAN operations into the Android app. I really believe the Android app, I'm starting to feel, I'm just getting obsessed writing for this thing because it's just, it's just really, it's really cool to just, you know, it's harder to take a laptop out and start connecting, obviously, right? We've already went through this. Everybody has a phone. Sorry, I'm not, I don't do iOS yet. Uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to show you, this is what the icon looks like, by the way. I never even addressed that. I don't know. It's, it doesn't look too good. It's an O and an S, Otterbein Solutions. That's my last name. Some weird name, whatever. Um, who cares? So you go ahead, you start the app, right? This is available free. It's on my website. And one of the things I did is I, I, um, I, <laughs> none of, none of my, um, none of the software that I've put out reads codes for worth any damn, if that was a sentence at all. You know what I mean? That if you have gotten any of the software, Android or PC, and tried to use it and tried to read codes with it, it was crap. It was garbage. It was worthless. I mean, it might have read something, but I found problems in the code. Because I focused on that this past couple, four or five days. And um, what I did was, because I'm like some hack, freaking backwards, you know, I mean, I'm just doing this off of the two cars that I own, my girl, my poor girlfriend. I, anybody who has a car that I go sit my brother, I'm trying to stick my stuff. <laughs> I, I can't finish the sentence. All right, so um, anyway, so what we got here is my Android app. And um, I went out to, all right, so I'm at my desk in my house, right next to my window, about 20 feet outside is my Impala, where I have pulled out... Um, what is it? Throttle position sensor uh, connector, EVAP connector. I, I pulled out something else. I think I pulled out the injector connector, but I don't. I think I have to try to run the car to see that error. Anyway, because I wanted to see some uh, errors, right? So I see the light come on. Uh, I pulled out those uh, first couple items, and, and uh, I didn't even. I, I did. You know, that's so wrong, right? I mean, it's one thing to take things apart, like just have the propensity to take things apart. It's another thing to take things that are perfectly good apart. Now it's another step to go and take something apart and then power it up after it's like half connected. That is like the stoop. That is like un, right? Who, no, that was unrecommended. Do not do that. Don't turn anything out, right? That's like why they tell you to take the battery connector off, like for the most trivial repair. Right? And what I'm doing is like evil. So I've been trying not to do that, but I had to because I had to know what was going on. And when I did it, I found that it wasn't crap. My software wasn't reading the codes at all. It wasn't doing anything. It was just junk. I apologize. I, wow. If you're out there and you were working on a car, you figure out oh, maybe I'll get this crackpot guy's junk. And then you thought maybe I'll read a code. And then it was just all this noise and me talking. And then you were well, like nothing. Right, bi-directional, up and down, whatever. You just wanted to read a code. You, my software wasn't going to help you. What the hell kind of software is that? What, what the hell kind of OBD2 software? Okay, right. See, I'm complaining about my own software, but that's serious though. All right, so I think I fixed that, and I think it's a nice thing because I because it's free and it's available for you to take or go go ahead and grab it. Now, if, if your light's on, you should be able to read the freaking codes, right? All right, let me demonstrate. Let me see what's going on here. What do I got back here? I just got some code back here. Uh, first thing is um, just this is an update to my application, right? We got we're up to version 1.002. Right? I don't know. It's like I don't know. We're live with this thing. Looking at this at the camera, right? You got it. You know what I'm saying? Version 1.1.002. Um, I the last time I had it, I had a complete. I had one of those hamburger menu things. Um, but I changed this to, like, you see the code in the background over here? I changed this to this tabbed page thing, which is, like, sort of an overall structure of the application. And this stuff right here is called, what like developers, they call XAML, but it's a specific type of a file. It's a, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see da, 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 da. yeah, see that there? I don't know, whatever. It's not important. It's something or other, dot 
XAML. Anyway, so this is like a structure of the whole application that you see here, right? You see this home and, the, you know, see the, f the five things here? That's uh, the top of the page here, right? I mean, I'm just sharing. I just, I don't know, man. I'm just showing you the code. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so, okay. So we're at version two now. This thing is pretty cool because you can, forget my finger don't work. Something doesn't work because you can swipe these pages across. All right, I don't know. Sometimes if my finger doesn't work, man. Yes, that does get me upset. My finger's not working. Cause, all right. So anyway, so I want to get an, uh, I have already gotten into the Google App Store as a developer. Now I want to release an app so like it feels legit so I don't have to tell you to go to my website, download this APK file, weird thing. You know, you can just, I can direct you. It's not happening yet. Oh, my mouth's getting dry now. Anyway. So, uh, so now I have this app, and I want to solidify, get it nice and solid. I'm making it free. I, I don't know if I'm going to charge it or whatever on the app store. I don't even know who would buy it, actually. But I can tell you right now, you can get this for free on my website. And it will read codes, I think. I'm pretty sure it will read codes. Of course, I can't say, because I, I only have two cars I tested on. Now, what happened is I, I, it didn't work at all on, uh, on my my car and uh and i was horrified now i came and revamped it so let's see so this first page this first home page is like this sort of just get status what's the general status of my car so this is talking to the bluetooth i believe and it's 20 feet away yeah okay so let me try again it's a little far away so they're communicating there we go okay we got it that time so it just gives you general idea if there this list right here had there been no mill light on and all of my you see these are your uh your inspection monitors right you won't pass state inspection in a lot of states if these monitors are still you know if these monitors are not complete um, and I have a mill light on here too. If these were all satisfied, all it would say here is no codes found or something nice, some nice message like that. You'd be like, oh, cool. And then of course you would see zero DTCs. Uh, type is just, it's an interesting thing that is, I saw in OBD2 protocol. Uh, the car tells you whether it's a compression versus spark, right? A compression obviously means diesel. I just, I put it there, and that would change your, all of the monitors' names and what they are cha totally changes depending on whether it's a spark or compressed. I, I just happen to know that by looking at the protocol. Um, and you just let it do what it does. You let it report what it, what it has. Okay, and um, so let me go to the code. So, so that's pretty cool. Now, here's the other thing. On the pages, if I go to the other page, I go, here's where we scan. Let's just go right to scanning codes. So I go read. And supposedly it's telling me it's reading, so it's oh look at that. Oh okay, so these are the codes that I got. I just read this off of my impala. It's twenty feet out the window. And uh, that's because I unplugged these things on the engine. Uh, on the top, right? So so this is completely yeah, there was nothing like this happening before when you would scan I don't know what it was just actually when I scanned when I did this and I saw these other codes and I scanned my car I got my stupid software was like no nothing there's nothing happening it's like everything's cool and then I took like another scanner like any any ragtag scanner was seeing codes right you know and I was pretty I, I thought it was pretty funny because I got some from the you know, there's there's a million apps on this Google Store, and uh, and the one that I had, maybe they all do, wanted money to see what the numbers were. It's like ridiculous, man. I'm not doing that. You're get this. Take this, man. I'm giving. That's why I'm saying. This is, I think I have something nice for you. Freaking pay for that shit. Just take this. You don't even. You don't have to subscribe to nothing, man. You just just grab the damn. You know. You don't have to know the manufacturer. Now the thing is, the manufacturer does matter. Um, right, right now all I have is Ford and generic. I'm talking to my GM, so there's no point in putting Ford. Now I I know that the Ford has like intake runner, you know those the um they kind of stir up the air. Is there in, it's an interesting mechanism on the Fords, um, but I know that codes for those 
you know, use the same number as generic codes, it means something completely different. So when you get codes from the car, it should get the right code. What you'll get over here on the right, if it doesn't recognize the code, if it's set to generic, it's going to report the generic code, which may not be what's on your particular car, but at least you'll get the number, right? If you have a Honda and it's a 223 and it's something completely different, you know this software is a hack, right? So you could just say, well, the number is 223. I know I'm getting a 223. Whatever that is on my Honda, that's what it is. So you know what you're dealing with, right? This is just some freaking software I'm throwing together. What, what am I doing? I have no idea. Uh, okay. So, and here's the other thing, right? Uh, you can, you can, like, just swipe between pages like this. And um, I'll get to that. I'll get to this page in a second. You swipe to these pages, uh, da, 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 and it keeps the data up there, right? And I just, it's just good, you know, it's like if you're writing on a piece of paper, you don't expect it to just get erased automatically, right? So I just leave it up there, uh, except, excuse me, <laughs> except if you hit the button, right? Once you hit, when you do something, then I clear everything out, right? So the minute you hit it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't read it, you know, if it can't communicate or something, it just will be blank. And that's a, it's across the board, right? I'll do that for the codes, right? When I read the codes, it, it clears everything out off the screen. So it's just, just so that you know that everything that comes on there is fresh. Um, now, the, the inspection monitors. I made this screen. I was inspired. Everybody, anybody who's watching this probably knows South Main Auto, right? Ow. Eric O., uh, he made a comment. He was using a scanner. It was an Actron scanner, actually, that I have. And what it does is, is it will just show you the monitors as they are uh, still uh, incomplete. And they will disappear off the screen until you see none, and then you know you're done, and you can go back to the garage and get to the next car. And he was like, look, I, I don't want to waste any time. As soon as, I'm, as soon as we're done with the monitors, I want to be able to know that I don't have to drive the stupid car around. <laughs> So I did the same thing. I was like, that's actually pretty pretty interesting, pretty smart, right? So uh, that guy is brilliant, man. That guy is a monster, a technical. The guy is a do Diagnostics is where everything gets hard, whether you're a doctor or a mechanic or a, 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 a software, whatever, right? So he's a brilliant di diagnostician. I saw him actually one time. He diagnosed um, it was a bad relay. And everybody, well, it was recommended to him that the problem was in a solenoid, uh, uh, unlocking trunk solenoid. And he was able to determine, no, it was like a relay that, that was just a little caked up on the connect, on the uh, contacts, right? It looked like a weak solenoid. Freaking guy is genius. Anyway, I, I know somebody out there is like, oh, well, that's easy. Okay, yeah, sure. Anyway. Uh, so if I sit, hit go, it'll run the monitor, right? So now what it'll do is now it's connecting. Now what we're doing is, is we are seeing, we are seeing the, um, drive uh, since DTC, see there's two monitors, right? There's two sets there's, since the DTC cleared and then there's your, your drive cycle monitors, right? The ones that you need clear for inspection are your DTC cleared since your last DTC cleared, uh, since last time you cleared. Uh, monitors right so this will show you these monitors as they are uh, you know it'll just keep monitoring them until it go till they go away now what you can do also is you can just monitor the ones that have not passed yet of course it's telling us the mill light is on because right because we're looking at the um, the non drive cycle the since DTC I don't know what to call them exactly drive cycle monitors same deal right you can um, show what's available and what hasn't completed or just like the relevant ones that haven't completed. And it'll monitor that. And it'll, it'll keep this text updated, drive cycle, te you know, drive cycle uh, tests versus if I hit that, and it'll change to since DTC cleared. Now, if I stop it and hit the notice, if I nothing changes now as I hit these check marks because I don't want to change the data or the heading. It's whatever is on the screen it has to be consistent, right? And the data is not coming in anymore. So these buttons are just saying this is the data I want when it comes in, but whatever's on the screen, if we if we're not running. Um, it's just what's on the screen. It's just whatever was it's just like any other screen whatever was left on the screen, right? You want to start it up you can start it up and, and rerun it. Come on, baby
And where I'm far away. I kind of like stressing it a little bit. It's good to stress out the, the thing just to see if it's, it's going to work. And I, I definitely saw something weird happening with the IAP one. It worked, but I was able to kind of jam it up if I, if I really, really worked it hard. All right. So anyway, uh, it's the same thing here, right? It'll just it clears everything out. Once it starts receiving the data, then now it'll just update as you mess around with that. So that this was an inspiration of, of our hero over there at South Main, man. So, dude, check it out, right? Anyway, uh, so, but the main thing is, you want to read the codes? Dude, you want to read the codes? What the hell? You give me freaking the right of software, bi directional, this or that, man. Please let me read the freaking codes. It will also, it also looks for uh, permanent codes, queries for permanent codes. There was none in there because I haven't, I haven't kept clearing. Huh. Okay. I'm already in, I'm already down that rabbit hole. Let's clear, let's, let's see what happens. I, I don't even know what'll happen if I clear the codes, man. Let's clear them. All right. Diagnostic codes. You can barely see that, right? Yes is to the right. So I'm going to say yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me read the codes. That's bull crap. All right, I have to go cycle the key. Anyway, you get the point. So, there it is, man. Thank you if you have stayed this long. And thank you if you haven't stayed this long, especially if you haven't stayed this long. I appreciate it. Um, go ahead and grab grab the software. It's Android. I'm I'm all obsessing on the Android. If something's wrong, just just make a comment. Tell me, man. This thing's broken here or there. I hooked it up to this. Um, oh man. All right. There. I'm just having memories of 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 just people being critical. All right. So. Just, there it is. Have a great day. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. I know I keep talking. I hope at least I'm not too irritating. And um, there it is. All right. All right.